Hi there, thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from the UK. Today I'm going to share with you a, a really cute, sort of fun, autumnal card, fall card, um, however you want to call them really. It's just a little bit of fun um, and it's using some of our sort of tools to um, create some pumpkins and um, some other little bits and pieces so I just thought it'd be a fun one to share with you so what we're going to be needing first of all is um, our card base now I'm using pumpkin pie and this one is standard c6 as normal which is 21 centimeters by 14.85 that's scored at 10 and a half to give us our card base I then have a basic black layer um, now this one is two centimeters shorter so it's eight and a half across by 12.85 tall and then I have a piece of basic white which I have already embossed just to sort of get ahead of the game really with our 3d bark um, embossing folder so that is just basic white now because this is such a deep embossing um, this is a centimeter smaller than our basic black piece so it's 12.35 by 8 across but as you will see if I now lay that up in the border I actually get um, a larger border at the bottom and that is because of the shrinkage that happens when it actually goes through the embossing folder um, so what I'll do is I'll trim that when it comes to it um, I think it's easier to do it that way than to try and give you an, an alternative measurement so that's on there so what we're going to do is we're going to actually make a stack of pumpkins I'm going to be sharing another card later on today on my blog that you'll see which I've used this technique and I just thought it'd be a really good fun one to share with you so um, I have done two already because we're going to do a stack of them so um, I wanted to sort of show you how to do them but not to actually um, spend all the time showing them um, as we go so these are our two two sizes and I'm going to be doing the larger one at the bottom here and these are going to be stacked on top of each other um, we've got to put a little stalk on top of our pumpkin here which I will show you um, so yeah so let, let's get going so the first thing um, I'm going to do is to make the pumpkin now I have already cut these out I have used our layering circle dies but if you have retired circle punches um, then that's absolutely fine you can use them um, as well they can be any size you just want to have three different sizes um, bearing in mind sort of how big they come out so um, this one is going to be quite a bit bigger so what I'm going to do is first of all two of these I have just coloured the edges very lightly um, in cinnamon cider ink so I've just used a dauber and just run it over the edges just to give it a, a sort of a layer onto there and two of these circles I'm just going to cut in half so that's just two of those so what I want to do is to create this middle shape here so to do that what I'm going to do is just line it up on one of these and I want to create a sort of like crescent shape on that edge so I found the easiest way to do this was just to get a pencil and just draw around and just cut it out by hand okay and then I want to repeat that for the other side so I'm going to line the circle up with those top and bottoms giving me roughly the same edge don't worry too much if it's not perfect it's nature so it doesn't matter so as you can see I'm just cutting that second edge off okay so now what I want to do is just to take my cinnamon cider uh, dauber again and I'm just notice I'm not putting any extra ink on it I'm just literally just using whatever's on there just to color those edges okay so the first thing I want to do is to stick this sort of misshapen circle I can't think of a word to call it it's sort of a bit of a sort of lemon shape really so I'm just going to stick this into the middle and then you'll see I've got these two arcs going either side 
and then what I want to do is to add my semicircles so I'm just going to add some glue and what I want to do is I want to make sure that my top creates like this little dip so like the top of a pumpkin or like if you had an orange or something so you will get a little sort of gap at the bottom here but we're not worried about that because we're going to cover that with leaves in a little while I'm going to do the same on this side I'm just going to pick it up I find it easier just to pick it up and then hold it in my hands just to sort of shape it so can you see these little gaps that's appearing at the bottom that's fine and you'll find that this will happen on all of them so we're going to cover those so don't worry too much so I'm going to do exactly the same again so this time it's coming even more into that sort of central part I don't want it too much but I just want to sort of create that sort of pumpkin shape so if you haven't got any pumpkin dies or pumpkin stamps this is a really good alternative okay so that's my start of my pumpkin so these are going to be all stacked up onto to each other and we're going to have a few leaves sort of interspersed as well just to sort of cover them a little bit okay so now that's done you can see I've got the leaves on here now I have pre-done a couple more but I've, I've also punched another one so you can see how it was made so this is actually the strawberry builder punch so it's the little blossom flower that I'm using for my leaves here now you could um, use a, an alternative sort of punch or something if you've got a little flower punch you could do a very similar thing that we're going to do here so I've punched this out of old olive cardstock and I'm just going to cut into one petal towards the centre so can you see where I've cut from here in a sort of arc towards that centre point and then a couple of mils from that I'm just going to cut another line okay so this is giving me the actual top of my leaf I'm then going to twist my scissors and cut across to this other side so I've got three leaves and then you can see that is the part that I have cut out so really really simple so it's nothing um, scientific about it and it all leaves the different shapes and sizes so don't worry too much if um, you know they're not exactly all the same you don't want them to be and again I've just used cinnamon cider just on the very very edges of that just so that it actually um, gives it a bit of a tone okay so I'm going to stick these onto my pumpkin if you get a little bit of glue just I always use just a pokey tool or something just to pick up any excess before it sort of spreads around a little bit I'm actually going to put three leaves onto this one because this is a, a lot bigger than the others okay so we get on pumpkins you get that sort of little twirly sort of um, green stuff I don't really know what it is but it, this always sort of adds a nice little touch to our pumpkins so what I've done is I've taken a piece of linen thread and I've also taken a dark old olive um, stamping blend I use stamping blends if I can because the nature of the alcohol in them makes the actual linen thread go a little bit stiffer but if you haven't got one of those you could just use um, the ink pad or the marker so you don't have to use a blend but I like it because as I say it just makes that go that little bit stiffer and what I tend to do is just to put a little bob of glue just on my desk and I'm just going to tap the end of my thread into the glue 
So I'm trying not to touch the end if I can help it, but I do need to make it stick. So try and use the end of a tool rather than your finger. Okay, and then you'll find that the thread will kind of find its own way that it wants to turn. So the best thing is not to fight against it, but just to keep um, keep pressing it down. And it doesn't take many minutes to stick, but sometimes it takes a little bit of persuasion. So don't give up on it. It's worth the, the battle. Okay, so I can see now where my little loop's gonna go. So I'm just putting another bit of glue onto the loop. And I can also see where it's gonna cross over. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue onto there as well. And I'm just gonna hold it in place just for a few moments, just to try and persuade it to stick down. Sometimes it will stick to your finger. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same again. Now I can feel this is coming over here. So I'm just gonna allow it to, because it's no point in fighting it to go the opposite direction. Um, I might as well just let it go. So again, I'm gonna put a bit where it crosses. See if I can get that to stick first, and then I will go back and do the loop if necessary. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit under here. Just need the tiniest little spots of glue, really. And again, if it does leak out a little bit, just go back over with your pokey tool and you can lift any glue while it's still wet. I'm gonna trim the end off there. Okay, so that is our three pumpkins now done. So let's bring the card back in. So I'm going to stick this directly onto the basic black. If you prefer to trim this before you stick it, then that's absolutely fine as well. Do whatever you're comfortable with. I prefer, when I've just got to trim a small piece like this, just to stick it down first um, and then I can trim it where I need to. So I'm just going to grab my little mini trimmer and I'm going to pop this into here and I can just see roughly where I need to cut it and just trim off the end. Okay, so next thing I want to do is just to stick this down to my card front. And I'm going right in the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna start layering my pumpkins. So I'm going to sort of go over to one side a little bit. I always think it looks like a ladybird on the back. So I'm just going to pop this one on first, just over to this right hand side. I'm going to do the same with the next one, but because this one is still a little bit wet, I'm just going to tuck under those, the bottom of that pumpkin. So it looks like they're kind of all stacked on top of each other. I don't want to go under too much because I need it to be sort of uh, showing that they're stacked. And again, just tuck under that very end. So I'm going to add a little bit of leaves and stuff to them anyway, so don't worry too much. Okay, so now that that is all stuck into place, and again, just got a little bit of glue. I'm just trying to remove there. So what we now want to do is the top of our pumpkin. So if you have um, still got in your um, 
stock, this uh, tree builder punch that we had a couple of years back. This actually makes a, a really great top for the top of the pumpkin. But if you haven't got one, what I suggest you do is just to simply draw yourself one. So what we want is, is sort of a, like a, an, a shape that sort of bends over and just sort of sprays out a little bit at the end. So don't, you know, don't take too much time over it. Just kind of go with it and just see where it leads you. So I am just trimming it to shape. Okay, so I'm quite happy that that's sort of how a pumpkin top will look. Use your creative license for things like this. And I'm just going over it again with um, cinnamon cider, just to knock it back a little bit, just to bring in those autumnal colours. Okay, so again, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. And I'm going to pop this behind the top. So you can see, oops, if it doesn't stick to my finger, that's because I've got glue on there from earlier. You see, it will just stick down and make it look like the top of your pumpkin. Now, we, ha we haven't got tops on here because we wouldn't see them because obviously these are all stacked on top of each other. So um, we have to kind of lose those. But what I want to do is to actually cover this bottom and give it sort of more of an autumnal feel. So the next thing we're going to move on to is our leaves. Now I have pre-done some of this just to save a little bit of time. So this is just a piece of basic white cardstock. It's an off cut from something I've been creating. And I've used four colours. I've used Old Olive, Crushed Curry, Calypso Coral and Cherry Cobbler. And I've taken a dauber for each of these colours and I've literally just rubbed on some blobs of all the colours. So let the colours overlap and mix them together and you just want this coverage of um, all the colours. So the next thing you want to do is to take the beautiful leaves dies. So these are the dies here. Absolutely gorgeous. These um, actually go with the Blackberry um, Bliss Suite. But it's these leaves here I want. And I'm actually going to use all four of them because some of them do go the opposite way and there's a couple of different sizes as well. So it's quite nice to have that mixture. I'm gonna bring in my mini cutting machine. And if you see, I'm, I'm just going to position these anywhere. I don't mind where they are. I don't mind sort of what colors are on them because we do want a real mixture. Um, but what I do want to do is to get as many out of my piece of paper as I can. So I'm just sort of fiddling them around until I can happily get as many as I can out of it. And I'm just gonna cut lots of these out. So I will go and do that and I will be back in a short while. Okay, so now you can see I've cut all my leaves from this strip. Um, this would also be great if you could use that on an alternative card. So don't necessarily throw things like that away. Okay, so now I've done that, what I want to do is arrange some of these leaves just on my card. So um, I tend not to think about it too much because I think if you think about it too much, actually, it, it, it's not so natural. So just kind of go with it uh, if you can, just to... Uh, let it sort of be more natural and sort of fall um, where leaves might fall. But what I do want to do is I do want to try and cover this bottom edge here just to make sure that it's sort of covering all those edges where um, it wasn't quite right. Um, and you can see how these beautiful colours come out through these leaves. And they're also different, which is, is what autumn is all about. So um, it really is sort of a nice mix of leaves and I'm not worried about sort of going over the edges here either I want to sort of you know make it as natural as I can really 
leaves don't mind where they fall at the end of the day and if I've got a particularly nice one like I particularly like the colours in this one I've kind of used this more as a focal one um, and the others are sort of being piled on top sort of thing and also think about colours because um, some colours will get lost as you can see but actually if they're somewhere different then they really do stand out nicely so just fiddle around with them but try not to be too uniform about it and we just want a pile of leaves basically that's what we're looking to achieve okay so that's our autumnal leaves so finally now what i want to do is to add a little greeting um and i always think of um gratitude for um sort of this sort of card i just think it just looks really nice so i've chosen the word grateful which comes out of the beautiful sparkle of the season stamp set um and this set has got some really gorgeous dyes as well so it's got things like um bats in there and um it's got a little mini pumpkin actually in it so you can make these sort of wreaths and stuff and it's absolutely gorgeous but as i say i'm just using this grateful stamp here and i thought the nicest on this would just be a simple black um greeting really which i'm going to heat emboss in white so i'm just going to dust my black And I'm going to put it quite close to the edge, I think. And then I'll cut it out afterwards. So this is just white embossing powder. See the glitter from a previous project I'd used there. as I say I want this to be a simple greeting so I'm just going to cut it into a uh, sort of a little banner let's just heat that now okay so I'm just gonna let that cool for a second and now what I want to do is just to tidy up the actual greeting itself it wasn't quite straight so I just managed to do that and now I can use that top as my guide. There we go. So this is um, just a nice little banner. Um, I haven't decided where I want to put it yet and I don't know kind of how I want to cut it. So. And just position, before I cut it any further, I just want to kind of just play around with it a little bit just to um, sort of work out where I want something to go. I quite like it sort of between these two pumpkins here, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a straight edge on this side here. And then rather than a normal banner, I'm just literally just going to cut a little cross. And then I want to pop it onto here. Now, this is obviously a higher layer than what this very edge is. OK, so what I'm going to do is just take a tiny piece of um, dimensional. Whoops. It's got stuck. I'm going to take a tiny piece just off one of the edges here and I'm going to pop that on that very edge and then I'm going to glue the rest of it and then tuck it into position 
So just giving it that little bit of support this end just makes it a little bit flatter. You won't get it entirely flat. I just need to hold that just to make sure that it's straight, which I think that is there. So there we go. So that's our finished stack of pumpkins. If you wanted to and you wanted to sort of add um, a few leaves in other places than you can do, um, I quite like that tucked under there. So I'm going to add that one. Sometimes it's nice to just play around with things after you've sort of finished them, really. And I've got one other sort of smallish one left. Just wondering whether to tuck that under there as well. Yes, I will. Let's say these leaves are just beautiful because they really sort of uh, do loan themselves to all these beautiful autumnal colours. Okay, so that is our finished card. So it's just a little bit of fun. Um, it would be what we called punch art years ago because we would have punched the circles out using our punches. Um, but we're gonna, still going to call it punch art, I think, because we've used a few punches and a few dies, so it's a, it's a real sort of mixture. Um, but it's just a really lovely autumnal card for you. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.